Welcome, I'm Richard and this is the Virtual Classroom Coach, your channel to discover and share everything we need to know about virtual classrooms and more. In this video, we're going to be discovering mm -hmm. So if you want to become an expert in design and delivery of live online learning, such as virtual classrooms and online workshops, then press that subscribe button straight away. So are you fed up of the standard video conferencing software and features? Are you and your learners just a little bit bored of the now tired looking interfaces? And let's face facts, we've been staring at them for what feels like millions of hours now. Or maybe you just want to bring a bit of fun and style and zing to your online classrooms or meetings. Well, enter mm -hmm, a brand new virtual camera app that integrates easily into Zoom, Google Meet and lots of other platforms. And it's been created by Phil Libin of Evernote fame and his team at Autotools. And mm -hmm, is making waves not just for its flair and creativity and innovation, but also for its very unusual name. Even Phil himself has made quite a few jokes and he's quoted as saying it's important to have a name you can say while eating. Well, one thing's for sure, mm -hmm, is both easy and difficult to say. Try it, you'll see what I mean. Mm -hmm is not trying to replace the big boys, but what it does do is add loads of pizzazz to what could otherwise be just another boring live online session. And you could say mm -hmm really brings the fun to the party with even a touch of the psychedelic thrown in for good measure. But is this suitable for virtual classrooms? Let's take a first look. So here's the main interface of mm -hmm. and firstly the big blue window you can see is the broadcastable space, what your end user would see. In mm -hmm, this is known as a room. It's essentially a background static or dynamic and you can change these rooms or backgrounds in the rooms tab and there's a few pre-installed but do not worry there's more you can download as well I'll show you later. Now by selecting one of these puts the background into the broadcastable area and becomes your room if you like the wallpaper. You don't want your learners to be staring at an empty room, so the next thing you'll be wanting to do is add content, such as slides or images. Now you can do this by selecting the new slide button and then add media. You'll notice the big blank area there at the bottom, that's where they'll go when you add them. And you can also drag and drop the files directly to this space if you prefer. If this is our room, we need a presenter, and that's easy to Look at the tab next to Rooms. That will enable presenter features. And while we're here, look at this Call Away button. Very handy for breaks or to escape the crowds while you sort out a technical breakdown. Selecting it once again brings you back to the room. So where's the presenter? Well, note those two sliders below. The first one is opacity and the second one is for size. So let the magic begin. And there I am. Look at how the camera follows my head as well as I move around. The opacity can be changed at any time whilst broadcasting and is a great way to spotlight the content when needed. These mask buttons are cool too. You can see I've selected the circle, but let's try the square and the silhouette. Now I can see uses for each of these. For example, I can see how you could move a circle precisely over content to spotlight it. Maybe sat at the top of a, a bar chart or something. But for now, I'm gonna stick with silhouettes. 
Note the anchor buttons above. As depicted in each button, it anchors you to the relevant corner of the screen. And you can override this anytime by simply dragging your silhouette anywhere. But the anchor does have a really useful feature. You'll notice that when you are anchored and you slide the silhouette smaller, it takes you down to that particular anchored corner, smoothly done and with plenty of control. Uh, by the way, instead of using the slider, you can also pinch in and out to magnify or minify. I think this would be a really useful feature to, to direct focus onto you when needed, but also to focus onto the media when required, really helps direct the learner to the most important part at that time. Now for a bit of fun. You can even colorize your video by selecting the colors right here. And if you want, you can even open the color wheel here to get really specific. Now I can see uses for this. Imagine in a fun quiz, you could turn yourself red or green to reveal if a team got the answer right or not. The striped out droplet takes you back to the real world. Now back to the blank area at the bottom. It's about time we added something to show off. Remember, you can add media from the drop down or you can drag directly into this space. Now for this project, I've exported my slides from Keynote as JPEGs and I'm gonna drag and drop them into this space. And there they appear and now it makes more sense. So the first slide has appeared over my shoulder, just like a newsreader, and just tapping on a slide or pressing your left or right arrows moves along the media and shows it in the window above your shoulder. Now remember you can increase the size of your presenter, but you can also do the same with the window as well. Simply grab the handle and stretch or squeeze. Again, this really allows you to influence the amount of attention you want the learner to have on a given element. Once you've imported your slides, how they first appear will depend on these three buttons here and which one is selected. So let's have a look at what they can do. Slides off takes them away. So I'll make myself bigger for the crowd. Shoulder puts them back over my shoulder and full actually takes them full screen. So I think I'll zoom myself out. And as you can see, I can move through my slides by clicking or right arrowing. Now you might be thinking, ah, but my slides don't have their builds as they're not in Keynote. Well, the great news is there is a brilliant way to use Keynote and mm -hmm, at the same time. It does require a bit of tech know-how. I'm gonna walk you through just how you can make that work in my next mm -hmm video. Time for more fun. So have you noticed the pointer button over there on the right? Well, uh, give that a push and you can go all interactive anywhere on the screen. And the little disclosure triangle next to the button lets you choose some wild effects that, that really would wake anyone up. Watch out for crazy cats though. Okay, let's have some different fun and see those rooms in action. Lots of fun here. And remember, essentially these are backgrounds. So let's have a look at more rooms, the plus at the top, different categories there on the left. And then by plusing the one you like, adds it to your room collection, easy. And as you can see, you can also add your own. Great for branding or for, for course themes. More useful features top left, including Copilot, 
which allows someone else to share slide duties with you from, well, wherever else in the world they happen to be. And then there's record, which allows you to create a video of your presentation for sharing later. And a really great feature is interactive recordings that lets the end user control how they view the presentation, such as removing the host, skipping back and forth between slides and so on. And this could be a great feature to provide always on content that still has some levels of interactivity and personalization. Expect future videos on all these cool features. The mic button does what you'd imagine. And camera lets you choose the zoom level of the camera and tick the box if you have a green screen. And you can also change the threshold of that to get it just right. Lots more videos to come as these new features land. But how can this possibly work with Zoom? Well, here's my top tips. Number one, have the latest version of mm -hmm. Number two, have the latest version of Mac. And number three, have the latest version of Zoom. And then simply start your Zoom meeting and select the little discloser next to the camera button. And as if by magic, mm -hmm, camera will be there. Simply select it, turn your camera on and Mm -hmm. And that's it, that's mm -hmm. a really fun add-on to the bog standard boring interfaces that well, we've become used to. And it's sure to liven up your meetings and your classrooms. Now it clearly does have some great features and although essentially they're, they're lots of fun, they could be really cleverly employed into online classrooms to create engagement, atmosphere, and even help with the transfer of learning through those distraction limiting features that it has. Now Ahem is currently in beta for Mac only and works with Zoom, Google Meet, YouTube and other video streaming services. And I hear there's a likely to be a Windows version coming out quite soon as well. Now it's currently by invitation only but well worth heading to their site to register your interest and details in the description below of how to do that. Who knows you could be the next mm -hmm. Now a big thanks to Phil Libin and All Turtles for allowing me beta access to mm -hmm. and I really look forward to further updates and I'll be covering them on this very channel along with ways that you can bring this software to life specifically for virtual classrooms and online workshops. And if you also want to be the first to hear of the evolution of mm -hmm, then be sure to press that big red subscribe button. But that's all for now. Don't forget to check out my other videos that cover top tips and tricks for running virtual classrooms. But until next time, as always, thanks for watching.